Hey guys, welcome to the first video on our channel EV101. I'm Jay and in this video, I'll give you an introduction to the world of electric vehicles. But before we do that, let me tell you guys a little bit about our channel. We will be covering everything related to clean energy and EV automobiles, news update about upcoming vehicles, uh, company developments and updates as well as EV stock updates. As for how we create our videos, first a value packed script is created by our team which then is given a voice by our wonderful voiceover artist and then it's carefully crafted into the perfect video by our video editors. So make sure you subscribe to our channel if you are a fan of Tesla, Ford or any revolutionary EV company. An electric vehicle EV is one that operates on an electric motor instead of an internal combustion engine that's generate power by burning a mix of fuel and gases. Therefore, such a vehicle is seen as a possible replacement for current generation automobiles. In order to address the issue of rising pollution, global warming, uh, depletion, natural resources, etc. Though the concept of electric vehicles have been around for a long time, it has drawn a considerable amount of interest in the past decade, uh, uh, rising carbon uh, footprint and other environmental impacts of fuel-based vehicles. In India, the first concrete decision to incentivize electric vehicles was taken in 2010 according to a 95 crore scheme approved by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. The government announced uh, financial incentives for manufacturers uh, of electric vehicles uh, sold in India. The scheme, effective from 2010, uh, envisaged incentives of up to 20% on X factory prices of vehicles, subject to a maximum limit. However, the subsidy scheme was later withdrawn by the MNRE in March 2012. In 2013, India unveiled the National Electric Mobility major, uh, Mission Plan uh, 2020 to make a major shift to electric vehicles and to address the issues of national energy security. Uh, vehicular pollution and growth of domestic manufacturing capabilities. Though the scheme was offer, uh, to offer subsidies and create supporting infrastructures for e-vehicles, the plan mostly remained on paper. While presenting the union budget for 2015-16 in parliament, then uh, finance minister uh, announced a faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles. Uh, with an initial uh, outlay of RS25 crores, the scheme was announced with an aim to offer incentives for clean fuel technology care uh, cars to boost their sales to up to 7 million vehicles by 2020. In 2017, the transport minister made a statement showing uh, India's intent to move to 100% electric cars by 2030. However, the automobile industry raised concerns over the execution of such a plan. The government uh, subsequently uh, diluted the plan from 100% to 30% in February 2019. The union cabinet cleared uh, RS 10,000 crores program under the FEM uh, 2 scheme. This scheme came into force on April 1, 2019. The main objective of the scheme is to encourage faster adoption of electric and hybrid vehicles to, by offering upfront incentives on the purchase of electric vehicles and also by establishing necessary charging infrastructures for EVs. Uh, explaining electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, uh, electric vehicles have a battery instead of a gasoline tank and an electric motor instead of internal combustion engine. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, which is also known as PHEVs, are a combination of gasoline and electric vehicle. So they have a battery and an electric motor, a gasoline tank and an internal combustion engine. PHEVs use both gasoline and electricity as fuel resources. Watch the video to learn how electric vehicles and different types of plug-in hybrid electric vehicles work. Uh, emissions. 
EVs produce no uh, tailpipe emissions while charging the battery may increase pollution at the power plant. Total emissions associated with driving EVs are still typically less than those for gasoline cars, particularly if the electricity is generated by renewable energy resources like wind. PHEVs produce uh, tailpipe emissions while gasoline is being used as a fuel source. To estimate the greenhouse gas emissions associated with charging and driving an electric or plug-in hybrid vehicle where you live, uh, visit uh, this uh, other video. Charging, it depends on how far you drive each day. You may be able to meet all your driving needs by plugging in while at home. Most EVs can be charged with a standard 120 volt uh, outlet. To charge the vehicle more quickly, you may want to install a dedicated 240V outlet or charging system. You may also be able to plug it uh, your workplace or at one of the growing numbers of public, uh, public charging stations. Uh, certified EV charging equipment uh, driving range did you know there are tax credits for all electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles? Uh, uh, you can save money, avoid trip to the gas station and help the environment. Don't forget to look for two. The number of miles an EV will travel before the battery needs to be uh, recharged is often less than the distance your gasoline car can travel before being uh, refueled. Uh, but typically is still enough to accomplish the average person's daily driving needs. An electric vehicle's fuel economy is reported in terms of miles per gallon of gasoline equivalent MPGE. Think of this as being similar to MPG, but instead of presenting miles per gallon of the vehicle's fuel type, it represents the number of, uh, number of miles we, uh, the vehicle can go using a quantity of electricity with the same energy content as a gallon of gasoline. This allows you to compare an EV with a gasoline vehicle even though electricity is not dispensed or burned in terms of gallons. PHEVs typically have driving ranges that are comparable to gasoline vehicles. PHEVs have two fuel economy uh, values, one for when the vehicle operates primarily on electricity uh, and uh, one for when the vehicle operates only on gasoline which is listed uh, as MPG. And you would also have to note that the EPA estimates including EV range are meant to be a general guideline for consumers when comparing vehicles. Just like uh, for gasoline vehicles, your range will vary for EVA, EVS. In particular, factors like cold weather, accessory use such as in AC and high speed driving can lower your vehicle's range significantly. Now let's talk about the availability. EVs and PHEVs are now available in multiple vehicle classes. There are currently over 50 EV and PHEV models on the market and more models are expected to be released in the coming years. Not all models are available in all 50 states. A little more on PHEVs. Uh, some PHEVs operates uh, exclusively or almost exclusively on electricity until the battery is nearly empty. Then gasoline is burned in the engine to provide additional power. Other PHEVs sometimes called uh, blended mode PHEVs uh, use gasoline and electricity together to power the vehicle while the battery has charge. Abstract electric vehicles are powered by electrical machines uh, that are more efficient than any internal combustion engine. Their other main advantage is that they do not emit any harmful substances during operation. Today, they seem to be the future of transportation motorization. All automakers are concentrating uh, on developing a variety of new models even if it seems to be a new technology, electric mobility has a long history, alternating glorious and disgraceful periods. The paper uh, briefly reviews the history of electric vehicles and highlights their future.
let's uh, talk about the introduction so electric vehicles have a long and storied history the interest for them largely varied over the years due to environmental issues and available energy resources the first electric cars were built in 1830s immediately after the development of the first electrical machines in the next period numerous electrical vehicles were constructed that without a uh, uh, significant breakthrough in transportation the real need for the first engine based transportation was raised for a very simple reason in the 1890s the world's most developed cities faced serious environmental and health problems from horse manure all vehicles at that time were horse drawn as shown uh, in the london alone more than 3 lakh horses roamed the streets uh, each producing around 10 kg of manure and 1 liter of urine per day manure releases methane gas which has four times the greenhouse effect of carbon dioxide with the rapid development of industry and transportation the disposal of this waste has become difficult uh, city traffic in 1890s uh, in this context the main goal of first international conference on urban planning which was held in new york in 1898 was to find solutions to uh, uh, circumvent uh, this alarming problems the final conclusion was that it is inevitable to replace the har uh, horse cars with an in engine driven carriage at that time two approaches were available steam and electrical vehicles even if the first steam car had been constructed beginning in the 10th century their wider spread due to greater series production can dated only to be 1890s they had some drawbacks and cold weather they took up to 45 minutes to warm up and needed to be topped up with uh, large volumes of water restricting their range at the end of 19th century there was a significant competition between steam and electric cars people preferred electric cars that outperformed their steam rivals they didn't have the smell noise or vibration of the steam cars moreover they were easier to operate with no hand crank start and had a such simpler gear system meanwhile several advancements had been made in the field of internal combustion engine which is ICE especially in germany even if the first prototype of the gasoline car was built by siegfried marcus already in 1870 the first vehicle specifically designed to be driven by an ICE a tricycle was presented only in 1885 by the car this was followed by the developments performed uh, by uh, uh, daimler and of uh, of porsche the last one built the first truly commercial such car in 1899 at the time it had very advanced solution such as the hub motor and its driving wheels he was also the father of the hybrid vehicles as he proposed first uh, first this technical approach in 1902 ic ic cars are all, also had a few drawbacks it took a lot of effort to wrestle with the hand crank and changing gears was also a difficult operation the early 90s marked the first golden age of electric vehicles many automakers have some come up with dozens of new more comfortable models in 1990 to 1575 electric cars were produced alone in the USA and only uh, 90, 936 with IC electric cars production peaked in 1912 and that time only the Oliver P uh, Frischel company one of the most significant electric uh, vehicle manufacturers produced yearly to close to 200 cars in the years after electric cars began to lose their share on the vehicle market because uh, the rapid because due to the rapid developments of the ic cars 
the percentage of uh, journal of computer science and control system uh, electric cars produced in the united states declined to four percent in 1925 there are some specific reasons for this fall during this uh, the so-called gusher era beginning uh, in 1895 the texas crude oil boom led to tremendous economic change and growth in the usa the sharp drop in gasoline prices made ic cars cheaper to own and maintain for the average consumer more and more gas stations were uh, opened across the countries making ic vehicles easier to refill another reason had to do with manufacturing ford invented the mass production of the very popular model t in 1908 which had a major impact on the price of the cars. In 1912, a gasoline car cost as little as $650, while a similar electric car was $1,750. Another nail in the electric car coffin was the American inventor, uh, Charles Scatterings, patent in 1912 for the first electric car starter. With the removal of the manual crank, gasoline car become more attractive to drivers. Cheap, uh, plentiful gasoline and persistent ICE developments uh, lessened the need for an interest in alternate fuel vehicles which during the next 30 years. However, throughout the 1960s and 1970s, petrol prices permanently increased. The most significant shock to oil market occurred in 1973 when OPEC declared the global oil embargo. In six months, the fuel prices increased by three times. This shock had several immediate and long-term consequences for the whole world economy. For the first time, humanity learned how to rely they are on limitedly available resources. In addition, the issue of IC-related air pollution began to acquire attention. Many automotive companies began to uh, develop electric vehicles, mostly for short distance urban mobility. Electric cars had limited performance and range at the time. In the meantime, ICE's improvements have been focused on reducing fuels consumption and emissions. All of this has led attention in electric vehicles to wane once more. Beginning in 1990s, there was a resurgence of interest in electric cars, mainly owing to tight environmental regulations. Most manufacturers began to convert their ICE models to electric or hybrid ones, allowing them to compete with gasoline-powered uh, cars in the terms of speed, performance, and range. Electric or hybrid car uh, flagships such as G, uh, GMS, EV1 and Toyota Prius were developed at those times. Tesla cars become the industry norm for electric vehicles 10 years later. Meanwhile, widespread of charging locations uh, took place all around the world and intensive improvement of the batteries was achieved by uh, the involved scientists and uh, engineers. Nowadays, Almost all the vehicle manufacturers offer a wide range of hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and a full electric vehicles, and they are hard working on the development of the future such cars. It seems that electric transportation is the key to a more sustainable future for humanity. The most developed countries can lessen their reliance on foreign crude oil and minimize carbon pollution on the planet by switching to electric vehicles. As a result, electric vehicles appear to be the way of the future. Several automakers have pledged to stop or severely limit IC vehicle production until the 2030. Moreover, several major cities in Europe and in the USA plan to ban diesel vehicles by 2025. The purpose of this paper is to provide a brief survey on the most significant achievements in the field of electric vehicle developments from these critical times uh, in its history.
the year the early years the dawn of the modern era and the near future the first electrical vehicles the very beginnings the history of electrical cars is strongly connected uh, to that of electrical machinery in 1827 the hungarian uh, benedictine monk uh, anus jedic built the first rudimentary but working dc electrical machine only within one year the he used it to drive a simple small scaled car uh, model the electric car model built uh, by uh, jedlik in 1828 another small scale electric cell supplied electrical vehicle was built in 1835 by sibrandus starting a professor of chemistry and technology at the university of uh, Gr uh, Gr groningen uh, which is in Netherlands and it weighed about 3 kg and could move for 20 minutes with a 1.5 kg load with its fully charged cell. Small scale electric car model developed by uh, uh, Strain uh, in 1835. Scotsman Robert Anderson is the inventor of the first full scale electricity driven carriage. His uh, the uh, prototype was built sometime from 1832 to 1839. In Aberdeen, it used primarily cells to generate electrical power and had the maximum speed of 12 km per hour. The first electric car was built by Anderson. The first electric locomotives during the same time in other Scotsmen, uh, Robert Davidson also of Aberdeen developed the first electric locomotive in 1837. Its improved variant called Galvani was tested on the railway line for the Edinburgh to Glasgow in 1842. The uh, locomotive was driven by four switched uh, reluctance motors uh, which you can see in the picture. With fully charged batteries, it could move near 2.5 km at 6.4 km per hour speed. The first electrical locomotive powered by switch uh, reluctance motors in 1851. Charles, uh, a senior examiner for the US Patent Office, built an around 12 uh, kV electrical machine for the battery-driven electric locomotive that achieved a speed of 30.5 km per hour on the Baltimore and Ohio Railway. In the linear variable uh, reluctance motors, the communication was performed by the so-called circuit changers, which is linear uh, commutator. The linear variable reluctance motor driving a very early electric locomotive. Representative electrical cars from the first golden era. The first successful uh, commercially available electric cars were named in an inspired way electro bats. Its first variant was built in 1894 for the combined efforts of a mechanical engineer and a chemist, Henry G. Uh, Morris and Pedro G. Salome and Chicago upon their own patented technologies. The first variant was a slow and a very heavy car having uh, steel tires. The rechargeable batteries also weighed more than 725 kg of the two ton uh, gross mass of the vehicle. Thanks to continuous research and development efforts, later electro beds become lighter, faster, and less unwieldy. They had pneumatic tires and were steered by their two rear wheels. These vehicles were powered by two 1.1 kilowatt claw pole motors due to their state of third batteries at the same time. They could travel 40 kilometers at an average speed of 32 km per hour on a single charge. Due to high interest in these cars, the two partners expanded their business by building several uh, handsome variants based on the model. One of these is given uh, 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 in this picture. These electric vehicles were also used as taxes in many cities in the USA. An elegant model of electro bed car here, also the main achievements in this field of uh, Austrian born uh, uh, Porsche must be mentioned. 
In 1899, while working at Jacob Lohner and Company, the 22-year-old brilliant designer created his first electric car. This could achieve a speed of 25 km per hour. His electric cars included uh, uh, cutting-edge technology at the time, such as the electrical hub motor that drove the vehicle's uh, wheels directly. And uh, Journal of Computer Science and Control System, he exhibited the world's first functioning revolutionary hybrid car with all four wheels driven three years later. It was given the name uh, Semper Vivus, Vivus, which means always living. Porsche increased the car's range by installing the ICs that drove the electrical generators to charge the battery rather than relying simply on the battery. The original 74 cell accumulator was replaced with a smaller having 44 cells to save weight and space. Two water-cooled 2.6 kV ICEs were mounted in the vehicle center driving the two independent 1.84 kV generators, each delivering 20 ampere current at 90 volt Later, its production uh, ready version was released and named Lohner Porsche Mixed. Its stop speed was 80 km per hour. And old timer variant, its uh, technical details. The Lohner Porsche Mixed, the first commercially available hybrid car. Later, uh, Ferdinand Porsche was the designer also of the iconic Volkswagen Battle, which is said to make a comeback soon as an electric vehicle. An important milestone, uh, milestone in the development of electrical machines was the so-called 100-mile electric automobiles. Um, uh, Victoria, the so-called 100-mile electrical automobile, this two-seat electric car weighted 1,000 kg, more than 350 kg of which were in batteries. It was built in Denver in 1908 by Oliver Parker, an early key planter in the field of electric vehicles. He made substantial contributions to both battery and automobile manufacturing. His name is linked to the creation of regenerative braking too. He concentrated his developments on the endurance of the newly designed electric cars. He proposed an ambitious challenge in September 1908 to perform the 29,000 km trip between Lincoln and New York in an electric car with no mechanical problems. He accomplished the trip in 20 days, covering on average nearly 100 miles, which is 160 km a day. Electric racing cars. The first car in the history to break the speed of record, record 100 km per hour had electrical traction. The uh, streamlined car was called Jamius Content, uh, never satisfied in English and you can see it in the picture. It was powered by the two electrical machines of 25 kV uh, of 20 volt and 124 ampere each. The body of vehicle was made of a light alloy, uh, partinium and a very lightweight and expensive alloy of lamin uh, laminated aluminium wall frame and magnesium, not frequently used nowadays. The record breaking took place in uh, Acres, uh, which is in France, in April 24. Electromote, the first electric trolleybus designed by the Werner von Siemens. The famed American inventor Thomas Alva Edison could not be left without of the electric vehicles business either. Among the numerous devices created by him, there are also electrical vehicles. After developing his first electric car, the Edison Becker in 1915, he presented the world's first electric bus. The first electric bus in 1915, Journal of Computer Science and Control System. Edison was very recognized that batteries are the main bottleneck of electric vehicles. He spent a lot of time researching how to make 
the accumulators of the lighter and recharge faster. He had high hopes for the nick nickel iron alkaline batteries, but there were a few bugs to smooth out. Even though their power to mass ratio was higher, they required more space and very significantly more expensive than standard lead acid batteries. And other significant disadvantage of NIFE batteries was that they released flammable hydrogen within charging and that could be very, very dangerous. So, uh, as a result, lead acid accumulators remained the most essential electrical power sources in automobiles for many years. It's worthy nothing that the hazardous feature of the NIFE batteries is currently one of the most important hopes of scientists working on hydrogen fuel generation which has the potential to uh, transform uh, transportation. 3. The Early Modern History of Electric Cars As previously stated, the rise in the gasoline price that began in 1960s and accelerated in the 1970s reawakened interest in electric vehicles after in almost 50 years. As a consequence, several electric vehicles were developed at that time. Small size and short range city cars were primarily uh, targeted uh, in field automotive. A small British company began serial production of a small two-seater electric car in 1966 which was powered by a 6 kV series wound DC motor and air lead acid tra traction batteries. The car uh, has a maximum speed of 64 km per hour and weighted 975 kg. It had a range of 40 to 90 km per hour when its battery were fully charged. The Enfield 80,000 electric car in 1972, Seberg, uh, Sebring Company of Florida created the car, a compact two-door, two-seat, small electric automobile. This was the first attempt in the USA to mass produce a modern electric automobile since the golden age from the beginning of the 20th century. It weighted only 500 kg thanks to an aluminum uh, chassis with a roll cage and an ABS plastic body. Between 1974 to 1970, 2500 of these simple and inexpensive automobiles were sold. In 1976, Sebring uh, uh, as previously stated, the electrical cars intended application field at the time was limited to specific local use. The electrified version of popular BMW 1600, which is powered by a 32 kW Bosch electrical machine, is a good example in 1972. BMW presented the Olympic stewards with two uh, such electric cars, which then utilized to, su to support the marathon, road, running, and long distance walking competitions. The cars range only slightly exceeded the 42.195 km uh, marathon, uh, marathon run distance. The BMW 1602 electric car using during the 1972. Uh, Munich Summer Olympic Games in the mid of 1970s, some automobile manufacturers attempted to convert conventional cars to electric ones, but the market was not ready for such expensive, hard to charge vehicles. Having in the mind the future need for clean vehicles not needing fossil, fossil, uh, fossil fuels, the Japanese government began to strongly support the research and electrical vehicle fields. The results were seen in the 1990s when Japanese automakers uh, such as Toyota and Nissan dominated this market. Meanwhile, in 1971, the first electric vehicle left the earth. The lunar rover, uh, a solar-powered planetary surface exploration device developed by NASA, began traveling across the moon's surface. The lunar flower electric vehicle uh, taken to the moon by the Apollo 15 uh, mission of NASA. The increase in EV sales also means a directly proportionate increase demand for electric energies. EVs will not be zero emission unless the electricity for charging them is as well. 
the use of fossil based electricity for running evs means sending the emissions upstream to the energy production stage energy production has to be the f to be free of fossil fuels for the evs to run truly emission free the share of renewable energy is expected to increase significantly in the decades to come with solar and wind power having up to 80% share by the 2050 however with fossil fuels through evs are free of uh, tailpipe pollution and can run on green energy. Their production accounts for a significant share of their total life cycle environmental impacts. This is mainly due to the material resources used in the EV batteries which requires more effort to extract. Material extraction and manufacturing of EVs is the most significant stage in terms of energy use and other impacts linked to the primary production of critical and important metals such as cobalt and nickel. Moreover, some of these material resources on which the EV system relies end up bearing supply risks due to um, more geopolitical issues than their limited availability. Until recently, the main demand for LIBs come from the consumer electronics sector, but that is anticipated to change with growing EV market. By 2030, approximately 85% of LIB demand in terms of their capacity is estimated to come from EVs, with the rest being used in consumer electronics and stationary energy storage. Lithium is the base element in LIBs and is expected to remain so for the battery technologies of this near future, which implies that the demand for lithium will increase alongside the growing demand for LIBs. By 2030s, LIBs will likely make up to 80% of 160,000 metric tons of global lithium, which demand each year. Other metals that are used in current batteries, chemistries, including cobalt, copper and nickel will also see an increase in demand. The geological availability of these metals will not be an issue for meeting the demand. However, the extraction of these resources will result in increased environmental impacts such as GHG emissions, water and soil pollution and stress on water resources. The continuous supply of some of those resources is subject to geopolitical challenges, uh, social and ethical issues such as child labor and poor working conditions are also of concern for the extraction of some metals. Charging. Uh, infrastructure, clean energy, material resources challenges. Electric Vehicle Outlook 2019 Consumer Electronic. Electronic vehicles his, uh, which is two wheelers and buses. Stationary storage uh, being the major source of the total electricity produced globally. Significant progress is needed, is needed in the carbonization of the power sector. For countries heavily reliant on non-renewable sources, greening of their energy production is, is an equally important challenge, parallel to the public adoption of EVs. Uh, find of life batteries, the future of electric vehicles and materials, resources of foresight, uh, brief, with use over time, the EV's batteries lose, lose their storage capacity, output power and the ability to rapidly charge, discharge, which are essential functions needed for an EV purpose. These batteries come for their EOL is to use as an EV, but they are not completely exhausted. And the remaining potential can be utilized elsewhere. EOL EV batteries carry up to 80% of their initial capacity, which can be used for less demanding purposes in other applications and during uh, which they can last for several more years. They can, can, can be converted into stationary power supply units for homes, uh, commercial buildings, uh, street lights, and sport uh, arenas as well as for enterprise purpose. Such is being used in service vehicles and mining and construction work, electric forklifts, uh, etc. Examples, Powervolt, a UK company works with car manufacturers 
uh, Nissan and uh, Renault to repurpose EOL EV batteries into power banks as a way of providing a cheaper and greener alternative to its customer. The world's largest mobile phone tower operator, China Tower, is replacing lead acid batteries with repurposed EV batteries and reducing significant operational costs in the process. Uh, China Tower is also working with Huawei to test the use of LIBs for high power demands of 5G based stations. EV manufacturers are also introducing similar services. The Nissan Energy Storage Program has joined forces with other partners in Asia, Europe and South America to offer energy storage solutions while giving a second life to EOL batteries. Benefits Repurposing EOL batteries is relatively uh, straightforward and significantly cheaper than the cost of new batteries. Secondly, the environmental performance of EV batteries improves with their reuse as it uh, circumvents the need to manufacture new batteries. The higher reuse potential and monetary values of the used EV batteries as compared to other LIBs such as those used in electronic products offered an incentive for implementing more circular business models. Now if we talk about the challenges, so number one is proper collection of used batteries is required to facilitate reuse which will not be possible without an efficient EOL management system that is currently lacking. With improved chemistries and decreasing price of the new batteries, repurposed best batteries will have to uh, compete increasingly with the newer, cheaper and more efficient batteries. Variation in the battery types and designs as well as their usage uh, hinders utilization of the full potential of EOL batteries re reuse. Reuse example benefits and challenges. For example, LIBs of a mid-side passenger electric car uh, which has 78 kWh size account for about 22% of the vehicle's total life cycle GHG emission based on 2018 global average power mix with carbon intensity 518 gram. This share of emission from battery manufacturing will increase if the vehicle runs using a more renewable energy mix. The total life cycle GHG emission of an EV can be reduced by about 20% through material recycling. These emissions can presumably be reduced even further via reuse of EV batteries before recycling. Proper management of EOL EVs is thus crucial for facilitating their reuse and recycling, which will bring significant economic and environmental savings. Ensuring a sustainable supply of material resources to meet the growing demand of LIBs will require exploiting both primary and secondary sources of the materials. By 2030, roughly 2.5 million metric tons of LIBs each year will be re reaching their end of life. With a sizable fraction from EVs 21, the production of LIBs carries a substantial share of the total life cycle GHG emission of an EV, which varies depending on the um, battery chemistry, EV type and available uh, energy mix. Circular systems for EOL reuse and recycling of EV batteries. The future of electric uh, vehicles and material uh, resources policy examples. With increased adoption of EVs comes an increased demand for material resources for making new batteries, ensuring a sustainable supply of materials to meet the ever-increasing demand will require optimized material recycling from EOL batteries. In terms of technology, lithium uh, iron battery recycling mainly uses three methods. Direct recycling is a physical process of recovering materials with minimum damage to their crystal structure. The two other methods are based on metallurgical approaches uh, that is hydrometallurgical and pyrometallurgical for extraction valuable resources from the cathode. Hydrometallurgy uses multi-step chemical treatment processes, including solvent extraction, leaching, and
chemical uh, precipitation. Pyrometallurgy involves a, sm a smelting of EOL batteries at temperature in the excess of 1000 degree. The pyrometallurgical process is less efficient in terms of material recovery rate, but it is more commonly used in the recycling industry than hydrometallurgy because of its simpler and more productive process in terms of throughput. These three recycling methods can be used in combination depending on the types of battery chemistries and the target materials being recycled. Policies will also play a crucial role in setting in the overall course of the development for EV sector. Direct and indirect policy measures can contribute to the growth of EVs for personal and public use purposes. Such measures may include incentives for investments in the electric vehicle and battery industries. Uh, fuel economy standards, uh, public uh, procurement requirements, etc. Other more direct measures often at the country level may lie in the form of economic incentives for the importation, purchase and use of EVs. Policy measures promoting EVs will not succeed without addressing the associated increase in electricity demand and related infrastructure such as charging stations. Besides, upstake future policies will equally uh, play important role in defining the long-term sustainability of EVs. In particular, effective EOL management system for the EVs will be crucial in order to allow for the recovery of value and resource from used batteries. The next two pages offer uh, example of policy and in inventions in Europe, the US, the China and India, the major growing markets and primary producers of EV. Recycling examples, benefits and challenges examples. Uh, Yumicor, a leading metal recycler based in Belgium, has installed a dedicated uh, dismantling and recycling process with a capacity of 7000 metric tons of H of LIBs per year. The process combines hydrometallurgical and pyrometallurgical steps to produce refined materials that can be used to make new LIBs. New companies have emerged with business models focusing on LIB recycling. For example, the Canadian company called uh, LI Cycli claims to have developed a technology uh, combining metal mechanical and hydrometallurgical processes that can recover up to 100% of all the materials from LIBs. American car maker, uh, which is Tesla, has been collaborating with local recyclers in different countries for their EOL battery recycling. Recently, it has started developing its own recycling system for both manufacturing, scrap, and recycling EOL batteries. Now, if we talk about the batteries uh, benefits, so batteries are one of the most expensive components of EVs. This recycling of EOL batteries, especially the direct recycling of cathode, has considerable business uh, potential. Uh, secondly, recovery of material resources from recycling EOL EVs can significantly reduce the life cycle GHG emissions. And number three, recycling can address geopolitical supply risks of not uh, of certain materials by creating local and source. Uh, secure sources of material supply for countries and regions with no material reserves. Now if we talk about the challenges, so shapes and size of lithium ion cells as well as their materials uh, composition vary across LIBs, which adds to the difficulties of battery recycling. Policy gaps, lacks of organized EOL collection systems and processing costs serve as the major hurdles in recycling. LIBs, there is a need for advancement of recycling technologies, including the automated dismantling and processing of EOL batteries. Recycling, the future of electric vehicle and material resources. A foresight brief, significant progress in terms of policies to promote EVs, especially of passenger cars can be observed globally. Financial incentives to compensate for the higher price of EVs are the most common policy intervention, which include subsidies and rebates 
for vehicle purchase, uh, tax deduction provisions and reduced road taxes and parking fees while there is a need to promote the use of EVs. Ensuring availability of material resources, especially those necessary for producing LIBs, is equally crucial for long-term visibility policy. Measures are also needed to avoid negative impacts on the environment and human health that are related to the handling of used batteries. Europe, Norway has led the way in promoting EVs with a series of an early and generous policy measures such as a waiver of a value added tax and registration fee as well as driving privileges and fee uh, free pa parking. The Netherlands, an EV friendly EU member state, has adopted aggressive policies for banning ICVs by 2030. Other European countries including Germany, France and the UK have announced plan to end sales as well as an eventual banning of ICEVs within the next 10 to 20 years. Recently, Germany increased purchase subsidies for the passenger EVs by 50% and announced an ambition to build 1 million charging stations by 2030. USA financial incentives for purchasing EVs in the form of tax credits and purchasing rebates are popular in several states as well as at the federal level in the US. The federal tax credit for new EV purchased in and after 2010 varies between $2,500 to $7,500 depending on the vehicle size and battery capacity. At the state level, for example, the Clean Vehicle Rebate Project in California offers a rebate of up to USD 7000 for purchasing or leasing new EVs. This California initiative gets credit for the increased adoption of electric cars in the US. China, the policy intervention to promote the so-called energy efficient and new energy vehicles began in China in 2010 throughout which the central government subsidized purchase of EVs and local governments subsidized the construction and maintenance of supporting infrastructure. Uh, subsequent measures such as traffic restriction, restrictions, parking charges, etc. have been focused on restricting not only the purchase and the use of ICEVs but also the investment and their manufacturing. Uh, in India, uh, India is promoting customer adoption of EVs while also focusing on becoming a global player in EV manufacturing. In 2015, the Indian government adopted the faster adoption and manufacturing of uh, hybrid and EV uh, scheme, which was scaled up to FAM2 in 2019 with an outlay of $1.4 billion for incentivizing EV adoption and supporting charging infrastructure. Indian EV policies are also driven by goals of reducing primarily oil consumption and creating domestic manufacturing capacity and employment growth. Controlling air, air policies in major cities is another important push for EV adoption in India, which is home to 14 of the world's 20 most polluted cities. Financial incentives are marked as an important policy intervention for a price sensitive Indian market. Through financial incentives or incentives of EV purchase can be effective. They could also carry a downside. Once incentives are phased out, they could adversely impact EV uptake. It is also important to make sure that the incentives such as subsidies or tax reductions are available to consumers across different income brackets and that they do not help only those who can already afford EVs. The price of which is still higher than equivalent of ICEVs, moreover electric vehicles and related policies are still new to many users. Due to the seemingly subtle differences among EV types but a significant difference in their prices. Many users carry micro conceptions and are reluctant to investment in electric cars, bridging the consumer knowledge gap especially by educating consumers on the benefits such as tax credits and rebates as well as the financial benefits over the longer use period of electric cars needs to occur alongside implementation of other policy measures for the promotion of EVs. 
Now, if we talk about the Europe, so in Europe, used batteries have been managed under the EU Batteries Directive 2006, which has set EOL collection and recycling rates. However, directive has no such provision for automotive batteries. Following the launch of the industry-led European uh, Battery Alliance EBA, in 2017, the European Commission adopted a strategic action plan on batteries in 2018. These initiatives focus on building a competitive and sustainable regional value chain for batteries. The Euro European Commission is in the process of building an EV batteries regularity framework for capturing the full potential of secondary material resources and ensuring long-term sustainability of EV battery. USA. The US Department of Energy began an R&D initiative called Redel Center for the recycling of LIBs in early 2019. This collaborative initiative between industry and research institutions is focused on advancing battery recycling technologies to match the needs of both current and future batteries. Furthermore, it seeks to be to establish a competitive battery recycling industry in the US and decrease foreign dependency on the supply of raw materials for the battery production. China. In 2006, the Chinese government proposed a producer responsibility policy for the EOL collection and recycling of EV batteries. The Energy Saving and New Energy Vehicle Development Plan of 2012 priorities the cascaded utilization and recycling of EOL batteries. The more recent technology policy for the recycling of power battery plan of 2015 regulates stakes holders, including vehicle and battery manufacturers, as well as businesses dealing with EOL, EVS, and batteries. The recent policy has also introduce standardization requirements for the design of EV batteries along with relevant supervision and management rules in order to promote better resource recovery from EOL batteries. Promotion of EVs sustainable material uh, cycles. Six lessons from e-waste the future of electric vehicles and material resources. A foresight brief design for the circular uh, economy at the end of their lives. EVs offer strong potential for the circular economy, not only uh, through recycling but also via other EUL options such as the reuse of batteries and other electronic and mechanical modules. This possibility needs to be considered early on during the doing design of EVs and batteries. Product design and business models play crucial roles in facilitating EOL resource recovery. The modular design of LIBs allows easier detection of and access to individual cells. The possibility of replacing a single cell in the battery pack means easier repair and reuse as well as the creation of economic opportunities in the process. Some car manufacturers are already moving toward designing batteries not only to run motors but also to share energy and their second lives, a trend that will likely become more mainstream in the future. Such uh, due diligence from the EV makers, the side will enable proper EOL management of EVs and their batteries. Beside batteries, the design should also allow easy access to other electronic companies and EVs in order to enable their disseminating uh, prior to recycling process. This will allow better material recovery from electronic items and where applicable their reuse design. Design standardization of batteries and other common components across different EV types can play an important role in enabling a circular system in the electronic mobility sector. Management of electronic components. A successful EOL management will also need to ensure the option, optimal handling of EV components other than LIBs. EVs operate in a more electronic setting than IC EVs do as EVs have electric power strain components such as invest inverters and motors and controllers. As well as modern EVs are increasingly using a number of consumer electronics for information 
communication and entertainment purpose. This means that more electrical and electronic items will become waste as EVs reach the end of their lives. The material composition of such electronic waste means that from a material recovery perspective, EVs can perform better in the e-waste recycling path than in the conventional EOL vehicle recycling path. Ensuring the diversion of electronic components from EVs to the EVs e-waste recycling path and not to be other bulk metal recycling paths will ensure higher material recovery. This will acquire easy access to and dismantling of electronic components and EVs in order to allow for their separate treatment and optimal recycling pathway. Management of EOL batteries. The experience from electronic waste, which is e-waste and non-automatic batteries can offer important lessons for the EOL management of EVs and their batteries. Despite policy initiatives such as the batteries directive in the EU and the EOL collection and recycling of LIBs that arises from the consumer electrical and electronic products has been a challenge. Significant amounts of EOL batteries still end up in the undesignated waste bins, which if not handled properly can cause hazards, including toxic emissions and fires during transportation and at waste and uh, waste processing facilities despite the availability of technologies battery recycling is hindered due to the lack of effective collection system the mixed chemical composition of different battery types and the lack of ec economics of scale are also notable challenges for the battery recycling industry the relatively large capacity of ev batteries compared to those, uh, those used in consumer electronics and a higher degree of consistency in material composition provide a better business case for the EOL management of EV batteries including options for reuse and recycling. Unlike batteries for household use, large LIBs are less likely to be randomly discarded and residual waste bin however the higher residual value functional as well as material of used ev batteries equates to a larger incentive for their handling which may lead to the possibility of their unofficial trading the lack of effective infrastructure for the collection of eol batteries and ownership for their eol management can thus result in an unwanted situation of illegal flaws to low-income countries and is in the case of e-waste the responsibility of the eol management therefore needs to be clearly defined and shared among relevant uh, stakeholders when considered upfront proper collection and resource recovery system can also help tackle the challenges of batteries of different uh, composition being mixed together and can help sufficient uh, through put the EOL of batteries for reuse and recycling. A foresight brief. The adoption of EVs is expanding rapidly, which offers several economic and environmental opportunities as well as new challenges. Many countries are uh, devising policies to support the upstake of passenger electric cars. Besides passenger, EVs, the electrification of public transport and local fleets, which are buses and taxis, can also be an effective strategy for many developing cities. Some countries have taken the initiatives to uh, evaluate the feasibility of EVs and their life cycle impacts in the local context. Policy instruments at national and regional levels can benefit from such local evaluations, such as uh, special variations in economic and environmental impacts of EVs can be expected across varying energy generation systems. Countries powered by renewable energy systems are more suitable and ready for EVs adoption than countries that rely on fossil fuels for electricity production. For these countries, ensuring the availability of green electricity to match the new demand for EVs is equally important. 
Material resources used in EV, especially those used to make LIBs, are of high economic, environmental, geopolitical and societal relevance. Sustainable and ethical sourcing of these materials is a key issue at the global level. Addressing this will require a combined effort from stakeholders throughout the life cycle of EVs, including governments and industry players. A system for increasing transparency and traceability of raw materials in the global supply chain is needed. International agreements can facilitate such a system in order to address the uncertainty in the supply chain of, un uh, of an important raw material, the use of which is expected to grow rapidly with increased adoption of EVs. Likewise, an efficient EOL management system uh, supported by the future policies and infrastructure, the cru uh, it is crucial for enabling resource recovery in the form of reuse and recycling of used batteries. EOL management systems should focus on the overall optimization of resource recovery via reuse and recycling. This will also require the border cooperation that allows the trade of resources in form of products components and materials while ensuring sound environmental and uh, socio-economic practices in the EUL management chain. But cooperation and diligence is especially important for emerging economics uh, economies that are transitioning toward electric mobility but lack infrastructure and supporting policies for the EUL management of technology products. That was all for today's video. If you watched this video all the way through and got to learn something new, subscribe to our channel EV101 and we will do our best to upload regular videos that educate you on the EV industry. Until next time, take care.